Okay, yes, Evan, so this week we will be creating our artist research page for the artist Mary Ellen Johnson. As you can see, she creates very realistic paintings and drawings of food that she enjoys around the house. So for an artist research page, you need a very big title and you need four different pictures of her work. So her work you're going to analyse, you're going to tell me what you like about her work, what you don't like about her work, what was successful and what wasn't successful. What I don't want to see is a lot of comments about colours and the work just looking pretty. I want to see a lot of different comments about like the sizing of her work and about how real her work looks and how it makes you feel and what you think she did this piece of work for. I also want a section on the artist herself so I want to know what year she was born in and some information about her background is in where she learned and what she does this artwork for. So Mary Ellen Johnson you actually does her work because she is interested in the meaning behind food and what food can make you feel. Obviously her work also looks very real which makes her a realism artist and she is alive right now which makes her a contemporary artist so she's making work in the modern day. A contemporary artist is just an artist that is alive right now and is making work in the modern day. A contemporary artist is a very good keyword to use in your work if you want them higher marks as a year 7. Also I would like you to use the sheet that you can see on the screen right now as reference when you're creating your artist research sheet as this is what a perfect piece of work looks like. This is an example piece of work. On this next slide I'm going to talk you through exactly how I would analyse a piece of her work for an example for you in future and on the slide after that I'm going to show you how I would do the realistic drawing which is the next task. So, if I was going to analyse this piece of work, I'd first of all start thinking about how this work makes me feel. So, referencing Mary Ellen Johnson, she's clearly interested in the psychology behind food. So, psychology just means how your mind works when you're looking at food. So, obviously, this food in front of me right now looks very tasty to me and makes me feel good and happy. So, was that Mary Ellen Johnson's intentions when creating this? I definitely think so. So, I think that's what I would write down straight away. I would say, clearly, her food looks very appetising and looks very clean. So straight away, that is what I'm thinking when I'm looking at this food and I think that is Mary Ellen Johnson's intentions. I would then talk about how she's grasped realism in her work. So obviously her work is to scale, it looks the right size, it's absolutely everywhere. She has very good use of shading and tone so that everything looks perfectly real. You can see where her lighting angle is and that her lighting is reflected in I think what is toffee on top of all of this, maybe even honey. But it looks very good and very real. So that's definitely something I'd be noting down as well. Now you might already know this through research, but Mary Ellen Johnson actually paints all of these artworks with oil paints. And I don't know if you know anything about oil paints, but they definitely take a long time to create. So what you should also talk about when you're analysing her work is how you can adapt your work to, to be a little bit more like this artist. So what you could say is maybe you would like to try out oil paints to see if you can create something like Mary Ellen Johnson in future. Or maybe you're just going to spend a lot more time on your next task, which is your pencil drawing which means that you'll grasp realism and you'll be working in the same time frame as Mary Ellen Johnson. Okay, so now that we're on to task number two, I need you to have the picture in front of you that you have taken of your own food. Right, so our first task is to grasp the scale of our food. So right here, I've got my picture of my cake in front of me and I've used a ruler to measure all of the angles and all of the sizes. And then I've used the ruler again on my piece of paper and make slight little marks. And then I've gone around the marks in pencil lightly to make the shape of my cake. After I've made sure all of my sizes are correct and to proportion, I've gone around and darkened all of the angles and the outlines, especially like the drips down the bottom, just to make sure that it's, it's all set in place. To this, I've got all my proportions correct. I've used more pressure on my pencil to create darker tone in certain areas. So obviously you can see all of the little dollops of icing in. I've shaded the ones in the background darker and I've made the outlines darker so that it looks like there's a 3D layout to my image. So here I've gone in and darkened the areas that are further from my light source in the image. So obviously this is the area that is in dark in your picture. Some places you might notice you've actually made too dark but that's perfectly fine. You just go in with your rubber and rub them out. So here I'm making reflections in my icing in. So if you've used correct skill and correct use of tone, your image should look a little bit something like this on the screen right now. Obviously I didn't spend an hour on this piece of work, but if you are spending an hour on your piece of work, it'll look a lot more real, and a lot more like the artist's work. So you can either choose to create the one image, or to create more than one different images, but I need you to spend at least an hour on this.